is Love Enough by Michael Franti and Spearhead. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, the killing of Trayvon Martin has also had an impact on corporate America. On Wednesday, the fast food giant Wendy's became the sixth corporation to publicly cut ties with the secretive right wing American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC. ALEC has come under fire for backing a number of controversial measures, including the so called Stand Your Ground gun legislation in Florida. Over the past week, McDonald's, Kraft Foods, Coca Cola, Pepsi, and Intuit have all announced that they have decided to not renew their membership. Membership with Alec. In addition, the Gates Foundation has announced it will not continue to fund Alec. Critics say the Washington based organization plays a key role in helping corporations secretly draft model pro business legislation that has been used by state lawmakers across the country. A major funder of Alec have been the right wing Koch brothers. We're joined by Lisa Graves, executive director of the Center for Media and Democracy, which runs Alec Exposed website. On Tuesday night, the Center won an is Award for Outstanding Achievement in Independent Media from the Park Center for Independent Media at Ithaca College. This year's other recipient was Democracy Now! senior correspondent Sharif Abdel Kadus for his coverage of the Egyptian Revolution. And there, Lisa Graves also spoke. By the way, we invited Alec to join us on the program, but the group didn't respond to our phone calls and email. Lisa Graves did. She's flown from Ithaca to Madison, Wisconsin, where the Center for Media and Democracy is based. Lisa, tell us more about what Alec is. Is, and this rush of corporations, as well as the Gates Foundation, away from ALEC? Well, the American Legislative Exchange Council describes itself as the largest group of state legislators in the country, but it's really a group that's largely funded by corporations, CEO foundations, and others. And it's a group that actually puts lawmakers, state lawmakers, behind closed doors with corporate lobbyists and special interest groups to actually vote on so-called model legislation like the Stand Your Ground or Shoot First Law uh, and have that be a template for passing across the country. And so as this uh, tragedy has unfolded, a number of corporations that uh, have been funders of ALEC and, in fact, been leaders of ALEC in the case of Coca-Cola and, and others have determined that they are not going to renew their membership in ALEC. ALEC uh, has provided the mechanism uh, for this particular law in Florida to become a template. That bill was uh, conceived of by the NRA's chief lobbyist, Marion Hammer. She came to a secret closed-door meeting in Texas in 2005 to present this bill as an ideal bill to be pursued. At that meeting, Walmart was the co-chair of that task force of ALEC, a criminal justice task force. Politicians and corporate lobbyists and special interest lobbyists voted in favor unanimously of making that bill a national model. And after that happened, since 2005, that bill and parts of that bill have spread to states across the country. So we certainly applaud the corporations that have decided to leave ALEC and stop bankrolling their operations. But explain Marion Hammer's significance in Florida. Marion Hammer is the former NRA president, uh, the president of the National Rifle Association, and she's the chief lobbyist for the NRA in Florida. She actually uh, conceived of this bill in the words of Wayne LaPierre. She sought out two ALEC legislators to help get this bill introduced in, this, in the state assembly and Senate. She was on the floor of the, of the body there, apparently staring people down as they voted. She stood behind Jeb Bush, the governor at the time, when he signed this uh, bill into law. and. She weighed in on um, the jury instructions that were written in light of this law. She was very pleased with the jury instructions that came out after this law was passed. Those are the jury instructions that will be in play uh, as the prosecution of George Zimmerman proceeds. Well, Lisa, on Wednesday, New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg announced a campaign to fight Stand Your Ground laws. Here's what he said about the legislation's impact in Florida. Before Stand Your Ground law became, uh, laws became a law in Florida, the state averaged 12 cases of justifiable homicide per year. Since the law was passed, the average has been 36, three times higher. Uh, Bloomberg made that announcement with a bunch of other leaders in Washington, including the Reverend Al Sharpton. Uh, your response? 
Well, that's precisely what's been happening. We've seen that trend in states across the country where this law passes. Um, increasingly, you see a, a number of individuals who are set free, who aren't even prosecuted for killing another person, often an unarmed person. And uh, the way this works is that, is that ALEC, through its legislators, uh, through its members, are basically putting a thumb on the scale of justice uh, to make it harder for these cases to get to a jury, both a criminal jury and a civil jury, and once cases do get to a jury, to make it harder for juries to convict shooters of unarmed men. Uh, it's not just stand your ground laws, though they are very significant for ALEC, for the American Legislative Exchange Council. They are pushing legislation and a number of issues. Um, the Omaha TV station KMTV recently exposed how Nebraska's voter ID bill was based on a template written by ALEC. Reporter Liz Dorland questioned Nebraska State Senator Charlie Jansen about his bill. I was looking at your bill and kind of comparing it to Iowa's bill, and there's a lot of similarities in the language there. Um, can you talk a little bit about those points? I really didn't use Iowa's bill uh, to draft my bill. I used Indiana's bill originally. Indiana's bill? Again, every single point, down to an exception for nursing homes and a Monday deadline for bringing in your late ID. Every single point matches the ALEC template. Indiana's is very similar to this model draft that ALEC, ALEC exposed, says that this is the model draft for voter ID bills for a lot of these states across the entire nation. Do you know about ALEC? You know what? Uh, the first time I've talked about ALEC in two years today is when you inquired about it. Um, I'm not a member of ALEC. I've never attended an ALEC uh, function, um, either, either here in Lincoln or they have national conventions. Then I hand him this, a document that still lists the senator on a big ALEC committee. Yeah, my first year down here, I was... Uh, I signed up for ALEC, and then I, I let my dues lapse. So I ask him to explain why his bill is remarkably similar to ALEC's model bill. And so your bill is not similar to this? Have you seen that? No, I have no idea. I don't look at any ALEC materials. But we did, and the match is hard to ignore. That's KMTV reporter Liz Dorland, an excerpt of her report on Nebraska's uh, voter ID law. Talk about the relationship between the corporate executives and the legislators in writing this kind of legislation, Lisa Graves. Well, this particular bill, the, the so-called voter ID legislation that makes it more difficult for Americans to vote, was actually approved at a secret closed-door ALEC meeting of the criminal of the Public Safety and Elections Task Force that was at that time co-chaired by the NRA, the National Rifle Association. What ALEC does is it provides a way for corporate lobbyists and politicians to meet at resorts across the country, have closed-door meetings without the press or the public present, to consider uh, proposed bills like this to consider copycat legislation that basically would take would be taken across the country, and we've seen Alec, which is really a corporate bill mill, push legislation on all sorts of issues to make it harder for Americans to get justice, to make it harder for Americans uh, to vote, to make it harder for Americans to have their day in court if they're if they are they or their loved one are is killed or injured by a corporate a corporation by corporate greed, by a, a bad drug, by uh, a product. Uh, they've made it more difficult uh, for. Uh, people to uh, pursue justice in a whole host of ways. And in fact, these bills, uh, which we've documented on ALEC Exposed, uh, cover the gamut of basically every way to change the rights of Americans in this country, including privatizing Social Security, privatizing uh, Medicare, me medical programs, uh, privatizing schools, privatizing prisons, uh, and even the, the notion of selling off state assets uh, to, the to the private sector and then having uh, the public basically lease them back from corporations. Well, Lisa Grace, you can understand corporations wanting to have a, a, a business-friendly legislation, but how do these corporations justify their involvement in, in bills like Stand Your Ground or in voter ID that really have nothing to do uh, technically with their role as a corporation in the society? Uh, and how do they justify that? 
Well, I think some of them aren't justifying it and, and are fleeing. But in fact, I think some corporations are making a gamble that if these voter suppression bills pass, uh, it will shave a few percentage points off the vote, and perhaps more uh, pro-corporate uh, legislators will be elected, more ALEC legislators will prevail uh, in elections. Um, and quite frankly, these corporations, the hundred, over 100 corporations that are financial supporters of ALEC, make its agenda possible. They basically provide the financial support for ALEC's operations and its agenda. And ALEC's agenda, I think, is quite extreme. Uh, it's, not just, it's not just voter ID, and it's not just uh, these stand-your-ground gun laws. It includes uh, changes to the rights of working Americans, uh, their rights to organize, whether in the public sector or the private sector. It includes uh, dramatic uh, changes to our tax law and the ability of the government to even raise revenue. And it includes provisions that make it more difficult for, for local democracy, for Americans to stand up to putting a nuclear plant in their backyard. Lisa Graves, can you talk about why the Gates Foundation was funding ALEC? They, too, along with Wendy's, McDonald's, Pepsi, Coke, are all leaving. But why did they start funding it? Well, it appears that the Gates Foundation was uh, provided a, a substantial grant to ALEC. It was in the six figures uh, to work on education issues. ALEC's education agenda is uh, one that's largely driven by uh, the privatization motive. In fact, the co-chair of ALEC's education task force is an online school company. Um, so ALEC has a whole set of bills that we've, uh, we've uncovered through ALEC Exposed that talk about how to basically redirect your tax dollars into the private sector, into these for-profit charter schools, for-profit uh, corporate schools, and basically take money away from public schools and the public school system and put it into these other types of educational companies. Um, and it's interesting because while the Gates Foundation uh, made that donation, that one-time donation to ALEC, a number of other corporations actually regularly give to ALEC to its so-called scholarship fund, which provides scholarships to legislators uh, good legislators in their mind to attend these fancy conventions at resorts and vote behind closed Lisa, doors we just with these same corporate seconds, lobbyists. But we cover this a lot. The networks do not do a lot on this. Can you talk about the media's involvement, the corporations that own the media and their involvement with ALEC? Just 30 seconds. Sure, that's right. Comcast uh, is a co-chair, a corporate co-chair in uh, some states in this country. Time Warner has been active in ALEC. A number of the big telecom and internet companies like like AT&T and also Verizon are longtime members of ALEC. And so they've pushed for um, a number of bills to make it harder to have municipal broadband and uh, otherwise make it harder for Americans to get their voices heard in the legislature on these issues. Lisa Graves, thank you so much for being with us. Executive Director of the Center for Media and Democracy has won an Izzy Award named for the muckraking journalist I.F. Stone from the Park Center for Independent Media this week. Thanks, Lisa. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report.